Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a very in-depth guide into tweening objects and models. And before I get started, I just want to say that I've created this start part here and this end part. And I also just have a normal part here, which is what we're going to be actually animating. So we're going to be moving this part back and forwards, changing size, transparency, colors, all that type of stuff. And that's it. Let's just get straight into it. I'm going to create a script here. I'm going to create a variable for our tween service. It says game get service tween service. And we're going to create one for our part. So game dot workspace dot part. One for our start. So that's game dot workspace dot start. And one for our end. And, and that's all our parts in the workspace here. As you see, I've named them all. Uh, other than that, let's just get straight into it. So tween service is the service we're going to be using of course and then we're going to call the create function which actually creates our tween now as you can see uh, if we go back here it takes a lot of uh, parameters here and i'll be explaining each one so the first parameter is actually the part we are going to be providing it so we're going to be tweening this blue brick here that's just called part and like earlier we made a variable so i'm just going to pass that in part and then the second thing it actually wants is tween info and what you do is write tween infer and dot new. And then as you can see, this one has heaps of parameters. And once again, I'll be getting into these. Now, uh, most of the time you can just write tween infer uh, new dot here, but for tutorial sake, I'm gonna make it a separate variable so I can explain it. Yeah, so tween infer dot new. And then I'll just plug that down here. Uh, like so, and I actually did a little case T there. And then after that, uh, the last parameter is what properties we're going to be tweening. Now, like I said, we're going to, at first, we're going to be tweening the position. We're going to be moving this part here from the left all the way here to right. So from start to end, and to, to tween properties, you make a table, and you can actually write in all the properties. Now, you could write in transparency, for example, and then you can set its transparency, right? So right now it's zero. Let's say we want to make it invisible, yeah? You want to tween it from zero to one, you'd write one in there. And you can also do multiple things. Let's say you want to tween the color, you can do the color as well. So color free, the from RGB, and then let's make it red. So let's say you want to make it um, from blue and then slowly transition over to red. Yeah, that's how you do it. You do you separate it by a comma and you just put all the properties that you want to tween and Roblox will handle that for you. Uh, but in this example, we're going to be tweening position, of course. So I'm going to write position. And then it's going to be equal to the end and its position. Because right now it's at the start and we're going to move it to the end. Because all the parts hold their own position, of course. So we're just going to tween that. And then at the end, we can call play. And that's pretty much it. But what you can do is if you want, you can put this into a variable and then call it whenever you want, like this. But most of the time that's unnecessary. So it's, in my opinion, it's just better to do it all in one line. Now, let's get into tween info, because it's pretty much the most important thing in this. Um, the first parameter we're gonna look into is time. And time is very simple. It's just, how long does it take? So let's say we want it to take five seconds. We type in five here and we click play. And as you see, it's tweened our part. Now we load it in too quick. So what I'm gonna do is just add a wait here. So we can actually see what happens. Toss up wait, let's say three seconds. And then we can click play. As you see here, it takes five seconds to go from our starting position to our end position. The second property we can get into is our easing direction. Now we can't really use easing direction until we define our easing style. Now there's heaps of easing styles. I'm gonna put them up on the screen now so you can look at them. And all easing style does is it changes how it gets to its uh, final destination pretty much. So let's say we write uh, enum the easing style and then all of them come up here. Now um, as you can see on the screen there's one called quad and I'm going to be using this one. You can actually see the curve and actually see what it does. So it starts off it starts off like uh, slower and then it speeds up over time once it gets to the top. So if we click play is going to tween it in the quad style. Now let's say we wanted to change it 
Um, let's let's look at another one here. We have uh, let's go with linear. So linear would just be a straight line, and we're in speed up, we're in slow down, and just go all at once. You can see it's consistent speed all the way over. Another one would be uh, let's say back. So back will, it, as you can see, actually goes outside the box. So it's going to go backwards and then go forwards. As you can see, it, go, it went forwards here and it ended out. Now, let's say we want to do that in reverse. Because as you saw, it went all the way over here and then stopped. Let's say we want to go backwards first and then go forwards. And that's where ease and style actually comes in use. So if we put a comma here and go down and we go in um, the ease and style and we put it to, uh, sorry, ease and direction. We put it in in and click play here. Well, actually, see, it goes uh, in first and then goes out. And then um, by default, uh, all tweens are set to out. And that if we go back, you actually see it will go back to what it was doing earlier. Out. And then pretty much in and out is like a mix between the two. Um, it's very hard to actually like visualize, but um, I'll just use it here anyways. It does like uh, it at the start and at the end. So it's pretty much both in that um, regard. The next thing we can do is actually how many times we want the tween to repeat. So what we can write is, let's say we want to do it uh, five times and we click play. As you can see, it's going to do the same tween five times over. Every time it ends, it's just going to do it again and then it'll end off. And that's pretty much re uh, repeat time. It's very simple. The one after that, um, let's going to set this to zero because we only want it to repeat once. Uh, after that is um, actually if it reverses, so reverse is a very cool one. If you set this to true and click play here, it's going to go to the end and then go backwards. So you can see here it goes out and then it goes back in. And that's our reverse. Of course, by default, this is set to false, so it only does it once. See, it does it once and that's it. Now, let's actually get into our properties because right now we're in between position. Let's say we want to tween the size as well. So let's do size equals vector3.new because we're going to be changing the size. And right now our part size is 4 by 1 by 2. Let's say we wanted to make it a complete cube. So 4 by 4 by 4 like this. We can actually plug that into our vector here and click play. And as you see, it will actually change size while changing position as well as you can see here. More things we can do is add color. So we can write color equals color three dot from RGB and then we can write two five five zero zero, click play. You can see here it changes to red. Now we're using um our back here, which is kinda um, making it really weird. So let's say we just went back to quad. You can see a better representation of this now. And you see it grows it grows bigger and changes color. And we can actually we can just keep on adding to this as much as we want. We can do transparency as well. Transparency equals one. See, it fades out into pretty much going invisible. Now, let's say you want to tween a model. This is where it gets a bit harder. So I'm going to delete all this and write our tween service again. And I'm actually going to uh, delete our part. And let's just change this to our model. So let's write model. And I've actually got a, a GPU model from one of my games I work on, as you can see here. And I'm going to move this model to where this part is. So I'm just going to get the position of this part and set it here as well. And I'm just going to rotate this as well. So it's like this. Now, if you want to tweak a model, you actually have to set it up correctly with worlds. So what I'm going to do here is create a part. And I'm just going to make this uh, 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And we get this little cube here. I'm going to put this roughly in the middle of our model. And I'm just going to put it just here like this. After that, I'm going to drag this part into our GPU. And I'm just going to name this a core because that's what it is. It's the core of the GPU. Now, what we have to do is go into our GPU here and set its primary part to our core. And then we have to actually weld everything together. Now, I actually have a plugin here, which I'm going to provide down below. It's a very good plugin. It's very simple. You just click the things you want to weld, like so. So you click on the first part and our core. And we're going to do this for all. Now, you can probably script um, your own 
uh, code to weld all this automatically uh, within a script or we can just manually weld it like this. Now there's probably a better way to uh, weld your objects like this but I found out this is pretty much the simplest way to do it. So after this is all welded we want to make sure all of our parts that are welded to the core actually not anchored and I've already uh, disabled the anchoring here but you just click this until there's no checkbox but our core we actually want to make sure it's anchored now what we can do here is just move our part to where it was in the green like so and we can actually get rid of this core we just make it invisible so it's not seen what we can do is go back into our model so game the gp uh what workspace or gpu and we can get the primary part which is what we set earlier now what we can do is put our model in here and we can do it pretty much like everything else so we can do our tween info and then let's tween the c frame now position doesn't really work we have to use c frame here c frame let's say dot new and then let's say we wanted to move it to our over here what we can do is we can do our end and then dot position like so and then we can play this But yeah, and this will actually tween our model. So if we click play here, as you see, it tweens our model over just fine. And now the issue with models is you can't really um, tween the color and size and stuff like that because it's also a part of model. Um, you could get very uh, in depth and do like, let's say multiple tweens or make your own module to like interpret that. Uh, in just this, I'm just gonna be going over C frame because that's how you pretty much model uh, tween model, sorry, is you have to connect everything to a core, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope uh, you people can go make all your games look nice with tweens. Uh, same thing applies to UI. Now, UI have their own things like tween, um, their own types of tweens, like t uh, tween position and uh, tween size and stuff like that. Um, I'll probably get into UI elements another day, but for objects, um, that's it, and see ya. Like and subscribe.